everyone, my name is Helen. This is the Shrimpy Miggy channel. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give me a like and uh, remember to subscribe. I make lots of this type of stuff about Rogaine and hair loss for women. So you'll wanna follow along and see what I come up with next so that you don't miss anything new. Uh, but let's get right into it. I'm gonna talk about Topic versus L'Oreal Root Spray. I have been getting so many questions about people. Every day I wake up to new questions in my Instagram. People DM me or they leave me messages here on YouTube. You're welcome to drop me a note in either place. It is always completely private and confidential if you wanna get in touch with me directly. I don't know how much more longer I'm gonna be able to answer people directly though. I'm getting so much stuff. It's like my new part-time job is answering people on Instagram, but certainly if you have any questions that I haven't covered, feel free to drop me um, a line, uh, a note on either of those. And I'm gonna go through some of those questions shortly, but let's get right into this. I'm gonna talk about these two. This is hair fiber. So there's tiny little flakes, that's what Topic is. It's teensy tiny little flakes. The first ingredient here is keratin. Uh, and you just, you sort of sprinkle this all over your thinning or balding spots or places where you see your scalp and so that's how that works. This is L'Oreal Root, L'Oreal Magic Root Cover Up and um, I swear by this. And people ask me what I like best and of these two things, my thing that I could not live without would totally be this uh, root cover-up spray. I find it works really well and I like the color like the color suits my skin very uh, closely So I'm just gonna show you how I put it in I've got you know my Rogaine's doing a great job, but I have quite a bit of visible scalp right here So I'm hoping you guys can see that and so I'm just gonna show you why I love this root cover-up spray. It's like Topic is a wonderful product. It's really, really great. A lot of people swear by it, but from my particular condition, this root spray is the best. So, and I'll show you why. I just like spray it, as you can see. That wasn't a lot, and um, you're gonna see that, like, it's hopefully the camera's picking that up. It really covered it. And that was about like three spritzes. Let me have a closer look. Yeah, it really, really darkened up my scalp, and so uh, how long did that take? A few seconds. So that's why this is my number one. You know, the topic, I'll apply this on the other side even though my, um, my scalp is not nearly as visible. I had, seem to have more hair loss sort of on this side than on this side, and that's something, that's actually a tip in and of itself. If you're trying to cover up sort of a thinning part, have a look around because your part on the other side might be much fuller, and so you may not even need as much product you might not need to put as much Rogaine or Minoxidil or whatever you're using on that side, but have a look. Sometimes it's just like changing your hairstyle can make a bit of a difference. Uh, okay, so yeah, I mean, I do have scalp. It's not hair, hair loss necessarily, but I'm just gonna show you how this topic works. So you just sort of sprinkle that in. Let me have a look in the mirror at the same time. Oh, so see, I kind of overshot it a bit and some of it kind of went into my eyebrow, maybe even on my face, but uh, you sprinkle it on and you tap it in. It works well as well. They both work really, really well. I will say though with the Topic, if you look on Topic's website, um, have a look there, you'll see one of the sort of issues, I don't even know if issues is the right word, but I find Topic can look a little matte. It doesn't look very dimensional and I feel that this root spray is not quite as matte you know, like that really matte, matte finish. Um, I find that this is a little, has a bit of the shininess that you would associate with actual hair. So that's why this is my number one product. I cannot live without this. The other thing that I like about it is that it is readily available here uh, where I live in Canada. I can just, if I really am in a pinch, I can just go to my drugstore, which is not far away. This is always on the shelves. It's stocked with the hair dye products. Topic they have as well, actually, but for the longest time you could sort of, you know, Topic wasn't as easy to find, but they've done a great job, at least here in Canada, of keeping that stocked on shelves. But this is my, like, to die for product. I love this L'Oreal Magic Root Cover Up so, so much. Whenever people ask me, I say this is my favorite one, but not to take anything away from Topic, it's wonderful as well. I've had this bottle now for over a year, and uh, there's a lot, there's a lot of fiber in there. So yes, this is a lot more expensive than this, this lasts a lot longer too, so that maybe that's something to consider, but um, they're both good. Maybe my suggestion would be to go somewhere you can return it or you can test it before you sort of maybe invest in this. This is much less of an investment. This is here about $10. I can get this for about $10, and this is about $30 here. And I know that you can get different prices and stuff like that, but there is definitely a price difference between them. If you're wondering what color I use, I use dark brown. 
I use dark brown in both of them. So that's that. And yeah, I love the spray. It is absolutely my favorite. Uh, so let's get into your questions. Like I said before, it doesn't matter how many questions I answer here on YouTube, there are always more. It always surprises me. Some of them are repetitive, but I'd say people do a pretty good job of like watching my stuff and then if they don't, if I haven't ever addressed their particular question, then they get in touch with me, which I love. I think that is so respectful. Like, thank you for appreciating the fact that I cannot answer questions again and again that I've already answered. I wish I had the time, but I actually do have a full-time job. Um, I am a journalist, a writer, a magazine editor, uh, and so I do this stuff on the weekend. This is my birthday weekend. I just turned 43, and so uh, instead of just strictly celebrating, I'm here making a YouTube video. So. But I'm happy to do it. I hope you guys enjoy it. Although I do not particularly enjoy when people are coming at me in the comments for like being like long winded and chatty and stuff like that. I thought we were having a chat. I appreciate that some people just want me to like cut straight to the point and that's fine too. But like people, this is my channel as well. Like if I want to be chatty, I think I should be able to be chatty. I'm not getting paid for this. I'm not monetized yet. I don't make any money. In fact, this is just taking away from my income. So, and you're getting it for free. Like I'm not charging you anything for it. So, um, whatever, you know, people will be people will be people on the internet. That is the danger of putting yourself out there on YouTube. You get negative comments sometimes, but for every one negative comment, I get about a hundred amazing ones. And so I thank you so very much for the people that leave me these like really kind, heartfelt messages about how I've helped them and, um, they appreciate my positive attitude and stuff like that. And I appreciate you guys too. It is really gratifying to make this. And so I will stop talking now and I'll just get on to the comments that I've been getting and the questions that I've gotten. Of course, these are completely anonymous. I would never ever out you if you leave me any kind of a comment that is just between you and me, I will strip. And if I put these questions up, I strip them of all personal information. Okay, someone wrote to me, I bought foam, but is liquid easier to apply? Just diagnosed with androgenic, I think they meant to write alopecia here. Androgenic alopecia, okay. I bought foam, but is liquid easier to apply? Foam is definitely easier to apply. If you're on a real tight budget, I would say maybe skip the foam because the liquid, at least in the United States, is a fraction of the cost. I've made a video about this too in my playlist, where it's, and that video is called I Lied About Liquid. Have a look at that. I was stunned. I mean, as I recall, a three pack of foam Rogaine brand name was $50 at Target and the generic liquid, and these are men's, I only use the men's, was $20 for our, the same, like for a six month supply. That's a, that's, that's a significant price difference. What I would say though, is to use the foam first if you're kind of like not great at applying things or you want more of an easy sort of learning curve, foam is foolproof. If you can put mousse into your hand and into your hair and you've ever done that, you can definitely use foam. It's not messy, it is easy to direct, meaning it's easy to put in the actual spots where you need it. The liquid is a bit messier. It drips, it drops, it can move quickly. Uh, it's an oil, at least the Target brand one feels very much like an oily solution. So I would say, yeah, the foam is easier to apply, my opinion. Okay, here's another question. Love your videos about hair thinning and Rogaine. I just started my Rogaine adventure and I can only hope mine is as successful as yours. Oh my gosh, I hope that for you guys as well, for all of you. Uh, I was thinking about buying one of those FDA approved laser therapy hair regrowth caps, but I will try Rogaine first and I hope it works and that I don't grow hair in strange places. Thank you for your story. <laughs> You're so very welcome. Uh, laser therapy hair regrowth caps. I do get asked this question now and again, like whether I've tried it, whether I buy it. They're expensive and I have, I'm not saying that they don't work. I'm just saying that I've never really heard anything positive about them. If you've had a lot of really positive results, please do drop me a note in the comments. I would love to hear about it, but my understanding is they're expensive. I've had a lot of people say they tried to return them and they've had some issues doing that as well because by the time you figure out whether it's effective or not, you might be outside the return policy time. That could be a struggle. Like they're not cheap and um, I'm not willing to say whether they work or not. I just have not heard anything positive about them yet. So I've never dabbled in it. I'm not opposed. If I were to get one for free, would I try one? Yeah, I would. And I'm just hoping that this person has luck with Rogaine if she is going down that path. It's worked for me. It doesn't work for everybody. I think we know that. Um, I don't know what the statistics are off the top of my head, but not everybody has success with it. I've just been lucky. Hi, Shrimpy. I am an African-American woman who just started using Rogaine. Two questions for you. Can I use Topic and Rogaine together, the same as other nationalities? 
Which fiber do you prefer? I want to use something to mask the hair loss until the Rogaine can start working. Any suggestions would be helpful. Love your videos. I was so touched by getting this question because this person has opened themselves up to me. You know, I am not African American, but she trusts me. So that's that's so amazing. She trusts me and yes, Topic is meant to be used on any type of hair texture, any type of skin complexion, color. Uh, if you look at Topic's website, you'll see that there is a black man on it and so you can see it on his hair and there is, I think, um, a fair-skinned woman as well. I don't know what her nationality is. I don't know what his nationality is for that matter. Um, but you'll see what it looks like on their two different hair types. At least here in Canada, that's the website that I was accessing. Yeah, Topic can work on everybody as far as I know. I've never heard any different and certainly that's what their website seems to say. Um, have I tried other fibers? No, I haven't. I've been happy enough with Topic, although people do do describe other ones that they've really liked. Again, if you find one that you like better than Topic, drop us a comment and let everybody see what it is because this stuff's expensive. There's probably less expensive ones on the market. I'm happy with this one, but like I said, I do like the look of this. If you have a look at the Topic website, you'll see that with the hair filled in, it has a bit of a matte look, like where it's been covered in, and so that's why I like the uh, Magic Root cover-up, and sometimes I even use them in combination. In that case, I use the fiber first, and then I spray over it with this, almost like to lock it in, or set it in place because I find that this is pretty sticky. It's pretty clingy to the skin and it doesn't move. And so does the topic for that matter. Um, but I just find when I use them both, it sort of is a nice color. In fact, I'll, um, I'll do that now. So I've put in some topic and so I'm just gonna spray it with a bit of this and we can have a look. To be honest, you're probably not gonna see much difference. Right, so you can see that's a bit filled in. So I just use short bursts when I use this. And yeah, I don't think you're gonna see much difference. Like I said, it sort of just gives me the confidence that it's a bit locked into place, which I kind of, which I like. Okay, so another quick question. Oh gosh, I'm just going to try and go through these a little bit more quickly. Hi, I'm checking out your YouTube video on Rogaine. Curious to know if you know what is causing your hair loss. Do you have alopecia areata by chance? Okay, so I've discussed this briefly in my channel before. Um, no, I'm not technically diagnosed with alopecia areata or female hair pattern female pattern hair loss or anything like that. My whole story is uh, I haven't done a scalp biopsy yet, not because I'm against them or anything like that, but I was just on a clinical trial drug that was renowned for thinning your hair out. And um, I also did a stint of chemo, chemo, I did do chemo, that's another story, keto. I did the keto diet for a bit and I think that that exacerbated it a little bit. Uh, but because I was on that medication, there just wasn't any sense really considering that it thinned hair to get a scalp biopsy because I was already going through like medical treatments and stuff like that. I've done the clinical trial drug now, so we'll see how that affects my hair. Probably won't know for another number of months. I've never done a scalp biopsy, so I don't have any sort of technical diagnosis for any of those conditions, and nor do I diagnose those things. I'm just strictly talking about how to put Rogaine in if that's the path that you choose to take. So yeah, I don't have that diagnosis. I was just on a drug that thinned my hair. Hello, love your videos. Great info, but I was wondering, when you put the Rogaine in, is it okay to go on with your regular hair routine? It won't affect the Rogaine. Are you also able to dye your hair? Okay, I don't dye my hair. My understanding of using Rogaine is you can't, having looked in the directions is you can dye your hair, just don't use Rogaine the day that you are dyeing your hair, but then you can continue using it before and after the day that you do it. Again, read the packaging yourself. If you're getting your hair dyed in the salon, double check with your hairdresser if you wanna be sure. My understanding is you can totally use dye. Other stuff, yeah, you can use your oils, your hairspray, yeah. You know, the key is just make sure your scalp is dry, so when you put the Rogaine in, you know, I wouldn't put the Rogaine in, and while the Rogaine's still wet, then hit it with the oil or whatever else you're doing. Make sure that that sinks in first. For me, that takes about five minutes if I'm using the foam. It takes a little bit longer if I'm using the liquid. The liquid takes closer to 10 minutes, so if I'm using liquid that day, I will just, let it sink in and maybe do my makeup and then maybe put product in my hair um, after. But yeah, you can use all the same hair products. There's no restriction on the hair products you can use uh, around using Rogaine. The only thing you'd have to worry about is sort of scalp treatments because Rogaine goes on your scalp, right? So you wouldn't want to put Rogaine in and then like put an intensive hair like scalp thing or scrub your hair with some sort of um, scalp exfoliator right after you use Rogaine. But hair styling products, use them as you normally do. Okay. Hi, I just watched your YouTube video about Regain product. It's actually called Regain in the UK. I don't know if you guys know that. And it is very informative, thanks. 
You're welcome. I just want to ask you, I have been having the same problem le legit for a long time and I started using Rogaine literally three days ago and I'm a bit hesitant about what I might face. Some people say some hair may grow other areas like the face. Others say it may, you may have itchy scalp. Others say it will fall out three weeks after the start of treatment. Is it okay to help me a bit and share your experience with me, please? Sure. I mean, <laughs> I have talked a bit about this, about like the hair shed and stuff like that. And so again, I've got that video in my playlist. I've made so much of this. Yeah, some people get itchy scalp. Yeah, some people have their hair falling out three weeks. You can have side effects with Rogaine, definitely. I'm 100% not the person who's gonna say you don't have side effects with Rogaine. You certainly can have them. Check out what it says, talk to your pharmacist, talk to your doctor about the different side effects, and just make note of it yourself. You know, if you do start using it, you know, I can't, like, I'm not a medical professional, I can't speak to all the different side effects. Everybody's different. I never had any though. I literally had not one um, extra hair growth. Someone told me twice, okay, different women, once on Reddit and once I think on Facebook that they had hair, excess hair growing down here, like where you put concealer. And they, and both of them use the term werewolf. So I'm not sure that they actually got werewolf like hair, but probably just that hair grew and it freaked them out. And yeah, that hasn't happened to me yet. Been on this for a year, but um, yeah, you can get excess hair growth in other areas. Apparently that is, that is, that is a thing. But that is only two women ever of all the many women that I've heard from. So I guess it can happen. So um, do with that what you will. Okay, so my last question. I bought some Rogaine, but I'm nervous to put chemicals on my scalp. Have you heard any negatives? So that sort of just talks about what I just spoke to. You know, I'm not a doctor. I can't talk to you about all the different side effects. I'm not a pharmacist. Talk to your pharmacist about it. They're a really great resource for side effects, for sort of uh, issues you might have with other uh, pro medications you might be using or other maybe conditions that you might have. If you have heart conditions or thyroid conditions or whatever the case may be. I'm not suggesting that you can't use Rogaine. If you have those things, I'm just saying, a pharmacist will be able to tell you better than I can at the very least, go to the Rogaine website and the FAQs and check that out because they have some stuff listed about side effects or look at the actual packaging. That has some info about the um, side effects and stuff like that. Rogaine packaging and generic packaging sometimes say different things on them, so read them both. Like if you're just standing there at um, Target or the pharmacy anyway, just like read the outside the box packaging for both and you can see some of the things that might be listed there about who can and can't use it. Chemicals, so I just wanted to address that briefly. You know, um, I think that this person meant medicine, you know, a medication. Chemicals are in everything. You know, I don't want to get all sciencey and ranchy on you, but any conventional hair product is going to have chemicals in it. Parabens are chemicals. I can go on. Sulfates are chemicals. Uh, so yeah, Rogaine is full of chemicals, but like hair mousse is full of chemicals as well. So some people don't use anything on their hair. Uh, I would imagine they use shampoo, which also has chemicals in it. I don't want to rant about it, but I'm just saying, yeah, like a lot of things have chemicals in it. I think this person may be med medication though, so I'm not going to come after them too hard, but again, you know, if you're worried about it, don't ask me. Ask your pharmacist, ask your doctor. I'm just here to tell you about my experience. Hope to help you guys out with like application and stuff like that, but medical advice is not something I can dole out here. Okay, that was a long one, guys. I didn't mean it to be so long, but kind of, it, it took a while. Thanks so much everybody for joining me. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Please do consider subscribing if you haven't done so, hitting that notification bell. Thank you all so much and we'll see you soon. Bye.